Marie Irving Shapiro. So Marie uh, brought in an uh, Irving Shapiro painting today, which was really nice of her to do that because we were talking at a workshop. I mentioned his name a few times, and uh, Marie said, well, I have an original Irving Shapiro at home. I thought, whoa, wow, that's really cool. That's how she described it, and she was nice enough to bring it in today. You know, and it's, it's pretty old. It's got an old uh, mat on here, not even acid-free. You know, it's, it's turning yellow and all that, but so nice. Thank you, Marie, for bringing this in. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Take a peek at that. That's that's it's it's a treasure. Uh, anyway, what? Well, well, first of all, uh, am, am, I, am I supposed to turn this on? Yep. Is it on? No, I don't think so. Okay, I got to turn this on somehow. Slide the thing all the way to the other side. To the side here. Other way, I think. Other way. Some turn light, red light goes on. Okay, can you hear me? Is that better? Not turn it off. This is off. Thank you. Now, can you hear it now? Can you hear it now? Right. We don't get feedback, but testing one, two, three. Now. Hello. Yeah, that's good. Oh. Attention shoppers. <laughs> For the next five minutes and five minutes only. I think it's good. I mean, we can hear him. First of all, I turned uh, this down. Like, yeah, you're trying again. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, you're, when, you're, when you're headed down, you're uh, here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, I, 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 I'm speaking a little louder. Anyway, uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me here today uh, and inviting me to the workshop. The uh, last three days has been quite an experience. I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, and, um, Again, I mentioned this once before I was up here for a critique, you know, uh, last year. And uh, the one thing that I was really amazed at was, I mean, your group. Uh, I, you know, I've done demos and I, you know, I've been members of other groups. But you've got it all together here. Uh, the meeting that you just had, I think, that's amazing. You, because there's so many people involved. Many times uh, in, a, in an art group or art league or whatever, uh, there's usually just maybe two, two people, two or three people. They do all the work, and everybody just kind of goes along. Uh, but everybody here is so involved. Uh, very impressive, very impressive. And uh, art groups, uh, art leagues are, are so important. I've mentioned that before. I think there should be more art schools in this country you know, because there is a, there's a need for it. And uh, I mean, just to get together and talk about art, uh, that, is, that is something that uh, uh, we're, we're lucky to be able to do that. Considering all the chaos that's going on, you know, outside and all that, to get together like this and talk about art and just have a good time and have fun, uh, that's, that's the number one thing. So, uh, Again, I uh, had a great time with the, uh, with the workshop. Uh, many familiar faces here and some, uh, some faces I haven't, I haven't met yet. Uh, but uh, it was, you know, I shared what I knew and then I kind of learned quite a bit also uh, from other people. And that's what workshops are. It's a two-way street. It's not just, you know, some guy at the is talking. Um, it's a two-way street. And, and everybody talks to each other. Everyone learns from each other. That's what a workshop is. I think, I think it worked out really well. However, I was asked a lot of questions during the workshop. You know, I mean, there's a lot of questions. And I answered them as best as I could. Uh, and I showed, you know, uh, what, I, what I know. And hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll pass it on. That's the most important. Pass it on to everybody. But all these questions I had, well, it's fun to do that. But now it's my turn to ask a few questions of you. OK? A few questions, uh, because that's the way I learn also. And um, let me uh, bring this up a little bit here. Uh, so anyway, OK, my first question, uh, why is watercolor like egg foo young? Anybody? <laughs> Raise your hand if you have the answer. 
Nobody was listening. Okay, fine. All right, fine. Uh, so, so anyway, um, I, I like to do animals. Uh, as, 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 right now, I'm kind of an animal, uh, birds, and insects. Before it was uh, locomotives, trains, you know, guy things, I guess. But uh, so, I, uh, about a month or so ago, I went to a, went to a Chinese restaurant and had uh, some egg foo young. And uh, I, you know, you get the fortune cookie at the end, and oh, I couldn't believe it. Uh, I I opened up the fortune cookie, and perfect. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can you read that, but it says. Uh, don't be so critical and overly concerned about details. I mean, this is true. I'm not making this up. This is, you know, if I if I made this up, it, you know, it wouldn't. I would not be. You know, it's okay, fun. But this is true. I actually opened up the cookie, and, and sometimes it sounded like. Um, how many times have I said that in my class? That's why I, I, you know, tell people. I said, you know what? Watercolor is meant to be loose. The style that I like, anyway, is loose, fluid, dynamic, spontaneous. Um, not detail. It's always big brush. Um, so in the detail, I don't even like to use the word detail. Um, and uh, so th this this popped up, and I thought, wow, that's that's pretty cool. So I still have this little fortune cookie. It, it's in my studio up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that watercolor can be your best friend? Uh, Friendly or loyal. This is Molly, by the way, uh, my neighbor. Uh, Molly is a, a little dog, kind of a senior dog. Uh, a little, uh, not getting, a, not getting around too well. But it's, a, a, it's great to see Molly uh, being uh, taken for a walk in a wagon by the <laughs> owner. So uh, you have this dog walkers and all that. But the owner uh, of Molly, uh, it's great to see uh, being pulled down. Evergreen Street, and Molly's just sitting there. Uh, one of my one of my friends, uh, one of my cool neighbors, and uh, she's a, she's a sweetheart, lover. But anyway, uh, she's uh, friendly and loyal. Um, but uh, watercolor is friendly and loyal, right? It can be friendly, um, or it can be a stranger. It can be sometimes a little intimidated, especially for Newcomers, you know, especially for people who are just starting out. I've heard that so many times that, uh, you know, I, I teach, you know, people ask me, what do you teach? I teach watercolor, and then they say, oh my gosh, that's tough, that's hard, you know, it's, it's scary, it's, I can't do, you know, it's like, you hear those things, but that's what makes it kind of fun, and you just got to try it. You just got to, that's the thing, you just got to jump into it. I think that's what we were talking about. Hopefully, if nothing else in the work, workshop, that's what's trying to get across. <clears throat> Uh, just try it. Just do it, and and have the confidence to do it. You know, um, take a chance. Watercolor shouldn't behave. Uh, Andrew Wyatt said that, um, and um, I think I kind of agree with that. It's, it's a partnership, and I've mentioned this. Uh, you know, like two days ago, I mentioned it. Right, actually, right at the beginning, which I say, hey, you know what? Watercolor is about you and your partner. Watercolor. The media, it's the medium itself is considered a partnership, a 50 50 partnership, like you know, being married or, or whatever, it's a partner, or being in a business. Uh, don't expect to have full control. Now, sometimes there are uh, certain artists out there that are a little more detailed. You know, we're seeing a lot of that, a little more photorealism out there, uh, which is great. And I, 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 I'm amazed at how. How tight some of these the watercolors can be, and I, and I really appreciate it. I could I could just look at it and study it for a long time. But that's at one end of the spectrum, and then there's the other end of the spectrum, which is really kind of loose and abstract. I think I'm somewhere in the middle here, which is I like realism, but I like it to be loose and colorful. Add my color. Um, you add your own color. I mean, the, the, I know with Shapiro, we would paint from. From black and white photos, we would never paint from a color photo, you know. I would paint from because the color comes from you. You have to look at a reference, obviously. If you're painting, like we were talking about in the workshop, you're painting animals. You got to know what it looks like. If you're painting trees, you got to know what it looks like. You have to respect nature. 
um, because nature is it's amazing what nature has designed. So, um, but other than that, uh, the, the, one of the first um, lessons that we have in class is we paint like cave people painted, you know, uh, way back when. Um, and they're using exactly the same materials that we are using today. The same materials that you're, the same pigments that you're buying at Blick and order online. Um, it's fascinating that those same materials are exactly the same that they used back. The oxides, uh, cadmiums, and charcoals, uh, sienna colors, everything that they did is what we do. Was the last time you painted a fly? Uh, any hands? <laughs> <laughs> Try it. Look at look at small things. Look at look at the things that you know. We've all painted a light. How many painted a lighthouse? <laughs> oh, all right, fine. My case in point. How many? You know, how many people uh, have painted a cow? All right, fine. I thought, I, I love cows too. I, I've painted many. I've painted many, many cows and many, many lighthouses. But I'm just saying, challenge yourself. Look for some things that are unusual. Uh, look at insects too. Look at insects. Look at photos, of, or even capture your own insect. I've done that too. I found different. Uh, uh, yellow jacket I found in the basement. Uh, oh my gosh, a yellow jacket in the basement. So I, I, I found it, it was still alive, so I kind of grabbed it, kind of didn't want to smash it or anything, but I, I actually painted it. It's like fascinating when you really look up close, it, uh, it's really, really cool. Painted a penguin. Um, one time I was um, uh, down at the Field Museum and I was with the Urban Sketchers, which is another really cool group. They paint on location, a plein air, different places, but they were, they were. Uh, uh, we were all painting at the uh, field museum with the, you know, obviously the big elephants, you know, in the main hall and the dinosaurs and all that. And uh, I had my easel side. We were just sketching, and, you know, it's like it's like a, a Saturday. So there's a lot of people, and I'm sketching, and uh, there's, you know, some people kind of gather around you and they start watching what you're doing, you know. And um, uh, adults there, and there's kids there, and uh, and sometimes people ask you questions, and it's fun. It's kind of, I'm sketching, and they ask you questions about things. And now I'll, you know, sometimes I'll ask them questions. Are well, are, you, are you an artist? You know, you like to draw. And the and the adults will always say, Oh no, I can't draw a stick figure. You know, oh I, I can't draw a straight line. You know, uh, I can't draw a straight line. Uh, the, the, you know, I say, well, I'm trying sometime. Oh, no, 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 I can't, I can't do that. It's, and I really appreciate art, but I can't draw. Little kids are standing up nearby. And I always say. So, uh, are you an artist? They, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you like to draw. And sometimes they wouldn't even answer. They just nod their head. You know, do you like to do you like to draw? You know, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like to draw. So it's one little boy. One time I asked the same question. You like to draw? Just, and the mom right away says, "Tell, tell the, tell the gentleman what you want to be when you grow up." So right away, mom is thinking about, oh my gosh, you're thinking about his future, what he wants to do when he grows up. And the little boy says, I want to be an animal doctor. Oh, I said, an animal doctor? That's great. You're an animal doctor. He says, why do you want to be an animal doctor? He says, well, I like, and he stops. He says, I like to draw penguins. <laughs> I like to draw penguins. So he kind of went back. You know, he's like, but being an animal doctor, you want to be a, you like to draw penguins also. You know, so that kind of stuck with me. I think, yeah. Ever painted a simple, flawed beauty? Something simple. Something simple. We look at flowers sometimes, and we look at the beautiful blossoms, and we look at the beautiful roses and all that, and we kind of, we don't see it after that. We don't see the dry flowers, where life is about that. It's about the, the bud, the beautiful blossom, and then it kind of fades off, you know, kind of dries up. But there's a beauty there also, you know. Um, so look for that. Ah, paint power. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The train. Train. So I love to do trains. Donut. Pastry. Okay. Did you ever paint a donut? How many painted a donut? <laughs> One donut back there. Two donuts back there. Okay. Try it sometime. Just go buy a donut. What am I? Find me permission. And paint them. You know. It's a really fun fun. Now, the most important thing with with all of these, it doesn't matter what the subject is. There are certain basic fundamental uh, fundamental drawing techniques you got to follow. 
you know, light and shadow, we all know about that. Light and shadow, warm and, tool, uh, warm and cool colors, temperature colors, um, uh, texture, those things always apply. It doesn't matter what the, uh, what the subject is. That's the thing. That's, that's what I always try to do. Paint energy, everything. Uh, but you got to know the basic fundamentals of a good drawing, uh, light and shadow, where's the light coming from, um, where's the shadow, uh, all those things. Let nature lead, lead the way. So um, just have capture a mood, but still look at uh, keep the flowing, dynamic, spontaneous uh, characteristics of water. That's all I got. So now <laughs> let's uh, let's let's do something here. Let's paint something. Um, any questions so far? Which I kind of let's put that down there. I think I it just turned off. Okay, all right, perfect. Mm -hmm. Turns itself off. Got the back let's close it down. Yeah. That's right. This is this is Molly who lives down the street. <laughs> this is Molly's friend. So anyway, um, we got to capture the emotion. We're not just painting this Linus. You know, Linus is uh, a little upset about something, um, but we're not going to paint the cat. We're going to paint. We're going to capture the emotion. Try to capture the emotion, and that's what I tried to do when I did. This is kind of my interpretation of it, anyway. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Okay. Okay. Um, so this is this is my interpretation of this. We're not copying this. We're looking at this basically just to see, you know, what what the Linus profile looks like. Okay. I'm not going to follow this either. You know, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try to match this. I'm not going to try to match the photo. I'm not going to try to match this. Um, only because I've done that. that. It's no fun to copy that. It's going to be my different. It might be a little different. It might be similar. It might be a little different. Put that up like that. The first couple things is something there. My setup. Starting point always is with um, obviously the photo um, is a uh, I have to do a values a value study a value sketch and I kind of you know did this I have a whole I mean I have a whole book of all the paintings that I've done I have a value study for. For each one, you know, I have this whole. It's like, what's it? Book number, book six. Actually, I think I'm up to seven now. But um, so all of these are just the value study, and I think a value study is, I for me, it's very important. Okay, kind of gets you going. It's just starting, starting to know where the light and the shadows at. So I'm gonna, this acts. The value study actually becomes more important than the, than the photo. So I'm gonna put that over here. Do you mind if we move everything over just a little bit so we can see your palette? This way? Sure. So we can see your palette. Yep, yep. Put that there. Put that there. <clears throat> and um, start out with. Where do we start? <laughs> Number one, big brush, big brushes. Um, if you're not familiar with big brushes, um, try it. And it's like, like I mentioned uh, earlier, it's like driving a truck. 
you know, if you're not used to driving a truck, it's going to be difficult. But you got to get get used to it, and, uh, and you'll find out it's really kind of fun. You won't go go back to smaller dinky brushes. This up a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, um, I'm, I'm not going to follow this for color because if I follow this for color, it's, oh gosh, it's like nothing. I mean, it's up from my cheap printer and it's, it doesn't say anything, you know. But I, what, it, what it does show me is if I do a black and white, the black and white actually is more valuable than the color, and it kind of helps me see where the lights and the darks are at, and it identifies where the light's coming from. The light's coming from above, boom, boom, shadow underneath, shadow on the side of the head. It helps if you know, kind of study the structure of the skull, and that gets back to life drawing, which is a whole big, another story. So, okay, let's see, uh, let's go with, uh, start out with, and for those who are interested in in what colors I'm using, I do have a, a layout that identifies all the colors that I'm using. One other thing. It takes me a while to get started. Once I get one, put this underneath my palette here so it doesn't slide around. Just under here, so going to slide around on this table. All right. We're not going on gold. One of my favorites. You still use the Shapiro slant tray, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. The Shapiro slant tray, you can always tell. Uh, Shapiro students, they use the butcher tray, metal butcher tray. And, uh, and, and plastic tray. Dan, is that your travel palette or your everyday palette? This is actually my everyday palette. Very simple. We'll talk about that too. Yeah, the everyday palette, it's very simple. I just have, it's a split primary uh, uh, palette. Um, and it's a warm and a cool of the primaries. Pretty much that's it. A warm and cool of the primaries. Uh, a couple of earth tone colors in here. Um, and I have, I have some greens in here, but I don't use greens. Greens are hard to, they look so, I think, they don't look very natural out of a tube. So I have to make my own greens. Let's get more, let's get a nice pool here so I don't have to go back and keep remixing. Is that a Shapiro opinion too, about the green? Because David's like that. What's that? <laughs> You know what? I don't. I don't know about that. I think I. I, didn't, I don't remember if he did or not. Um, he just kind of something I just kind of know. So I've read that too. Greens are kind of are tough to get out of a you know get them out of a tube. If you want to see his greens? That whole painting is green, basically. Oh, really? I'll show you. So yeah, if you have any questions along the way, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna paint here. Sometimes I, I I'll talk along the way, but then sometimes I just kind of get into this. So if I go if I go dark on you, so don't uh, <laughs> try to uh, here boom boom boom. What's the background music out there? Boom, get some, get some nice, uh, get some wet areas here. You're painting on dry, right? Yes, it's dry. Yep, yep, it's dry. <laughs> but I use a lot of water, and, and if I paint quick enough, I can still use the, uh, it's almost like wet into wet, but, uh, Paint fast enough and then make sure you have a lot of uh, water on your brush 
And just keep moving. You don't have to paint real fast, you know, but you just have to keep moving anyway. Yes. Yeah, this is a uh, natural probably squirrel. I'm not quite sure exactly, but <coughs> boxers or briefs. Can I ask you a question while you're painting? Oh yeah, definitely. Sure, sure. Yeah, I noticed you uh, filled in these teeth. Is that like an underpainting what you've done with these teeth? Yeah, I'm just trying to get uh, block in uh, light and shadow. Yeah. Light and shadow. Light on top, right? Light on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sun's coming from the sky. Yeah. Light, uh, flat part of the head. Um, in reality, if you were to look at skulls, actually I found a skull one time in the forest preserve. A deer skull. It was so fascinating. I mean, it's really kind of, really kind of fun. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, it's kind of Oh my gosh, the mask, yes. Oh, see the blue here? I masked out his teeth, or her teeth. That's all I use, a little masking for. Yep, yep. Good eye, good eye. I should have mentioned that. Because it's cool. Say some cool. There's some cool color. And it, 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 uh, I just wanted to differentiate the warm and cool. And green is cool. And it'll dry, it'll dry a little lighter, too, for sure. Yep. <clears throat> and as far as color goes, oh, gosh, you know, color can be up to you. And that's what kind of makes... I, I enjoy just putting in all kinds of... Uh, Experimental type colors, just for fun. How has your palette changed over the years? Now that there's been oh, it's become changed. it's become it's become simpler. <laughs> you know, uh, I know in the workshop we were talking about that, and uh, you go into a, a, an art supply store um, and you see these uh, racks of tubes of pigment with all these different colors, and you think, holy cow! And it can be a little confusing, I think. Uh, they have some really fascinating uh, colors with these great names. But in a sense, if you really look at them, they're really kind of just uh, uh, combinations of the different, uh, different other raw pigments. Different raw pigments. And uh, you can actually do those yourself. You can actually start mixing those things yourself. What kind of, uh, what brand of watercolors do you really like? I like Holbein, only because they stay moist longer in the, in the tray. Um, other seem to dry out into cakes. Well, Holbein, you know, is really, stays moist a little longer. Well, you know, I've been experimenting with that. Uh, I used, was using arches for, for the longest time, and then uh, for demos, I use a, uh, a block, you know, where it was 20 sheets, uh, and it's um, sealed all the way around. 
And uh, now I'm using Fabiano, or actually I'm finding out that Blick has their own store paper, which is not too bad. It's not bad. So have you noticed any change in Arches paper? Because I know that company was sold. Yeah, they have. They have. That's why I kind of switched out to experimenting with other, some other brands anyway. So what is that that you just A little uh, instant coffee. Instant coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Not espresso. <laughs> no, 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 that's like... <coughs> instant coffee. Just give a little texture. Do I use it? Oh, I don't know if I use it on this, but I... Oh, yeah, I use it here. I may have waited too long. Something you have to drop it into wet. Into a wet area. That's a, plus, if you just get a little spritzing, gives it some nice uh, texture to it. A particular um, coffee? Yeah. <laughs> Folgers? <laughs> yeah. You laugh. Sanka. Sanka. <laughs> Sanka. <laughs> And it doesn't make a difference because uh, uh, instant coffee, some are larger crystals. Some are like almost like a, a powder. Some have like crystals. And the crystals work better because they like dissolve. Um, and, uh... All right. So. Yeah, everyone knows about salt, right? Yeah, that's a, and those are there's like those little tricks, you know. Which I'm not a big fan of tricks like salt and instant coffee. Even masking fluid is kind of a, you know, Shapiro would never let you use masking fluid. Oh, I don't think he even mentioned it ever. But right, right, Tony. Yeah, Tony is a Shapiro student too. White every now and then, but that was pretty good. Yeah, we use white. Okay. We'll just dry a little bit now. So I, I have basically what I have here is uh, let me kind of see it. Actually, definitely looks different there, but. I may come in here a little dark. What I'm getting is uh, to light on top, kind of the top part of her head. <coughs> light, light, light. Shadow, more shadow on the side of the head. You know, heads are not really, heads are not round. You know, they have planes. You know, even in your face, you're, you know, even humans, you have a plane in the front, plane on the either side, and uh, more so, and, and especially with animals, too. If you look at the skulls, um, there's a, a, a f the front flat is actually flat, <coughs> and the sides are flatter also. So I'm trying to capture that, and this is still kind of uh, it's still kind of blending itself because I put a lot of water in there, so it's still blending, and um, it will dry a little lighter also. If you need so to take a break, we can because we we can in 10:30 we can take a halfway that break if you like. Um, yeah, maybe. You decide when you want to take a break. Let's see, this is still kind of, what time is it? Uh, give me a, no, a little, uh, hold on, let me, uh, can look on another area here. So I worked at the top, I started down, and what I'm going to do now is I still have a big brush. Just a big brush. Oh, you don't glasses. Oh, it changes. I put the glasses on. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Good or sometimes better, sometimes <laughs> not so much, you know. Hey, Dan? Yes? Since you've got a lot of that blocked in already, can you talk a little bit about edges and your approach to them? Oh, edges, yes, yes. Uh, the one word would be a variety, just a variety of edges. Um, you want some hard edges, you want some soft edges throughout here, and that's be, uh, 
the soft edges are going to be pretty much, this is all uh, soft edges. You have a lot of color in there, a lot of color. Um, medium tone color and um, a lot of soft edges throughout. You know, it's all just mingling colors. Let them mingle. And some people will say, oh my gosh, look at all that. It's like, what? It's like too many colors, whatever. But uh, after a while, hopefully, you know, you just stay with the pattern, they'll come together. And then later on, uh, I'll be able to put in some harder edges to define the uh, areas a little bit more. Uh, I won't even show you. I'm not going to show you that. I was going to, but maybe I won't. This kind of, it's a nice under underpainting. Pretty much all soft edges, except for maybe, um, obviously, the edges all the way around. But just a, a variety. That's all. That's, you know, there's nothing. Too many times you have all hard edges. You know, I think a lot of times <coughs> beginners have too many hard edges. It almost looks like their shapes cut out and pasted down. So, especially with the, the subject and the background, you know, the, the, the subject, whatever it may be, and then to do the background, and it's like a hard edge, you know, all the way around. So it's almost like it's two separate things. But you, the soft edges really help when you take the subject and use soft edges to be in harmony with the background. <coughs> the background. That, that's what, uh, that's how I like to use the, uh, the hard edges. Hard and soft edges, but um, let me. Uh, there's another brush here that has uh, holds less water. want to get start noodling. I don't want to noodle too soon. <laughs> I don't like to noodle at all, but uh, I think I just want to get a, some uh, not uh, I already have this kind of what I consider medium value. Now I'm kind of going to darker, darker medium value. Darker. Kind of defines the eyes, but I don't not worried about worry about anything actually. Put that in there. Let's go over here. Boom, 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 boom. fluid in here. Around. really kind of fun. It, it, again, uh, was it two days or so ago, somebody pointed out that if you look at the painting, you look at my palette, they're, they're almost the same. Yeah. You know, they're the same. And, and that's, that's intentional because I try to keep warm uh, pigment over here, cooler over here. So all the colors that are here are over here. And after a while, with my simple split primary palette, I mean, I have every color that I need right here. Um, purples, you know, I don't have a purple up here, but there's a purple here that I may use. Bring that in here. <coughs> B 
big big thing of, of painting also is, is just having the confidence to put it down and, and don't question yourself. How many times do we put something down and think, oh gosh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, and then they, they you know, get off the paper towel and start wedding dabbing, wedding dabbing, you know, we thought it would all been there, that's for sure. But uh, the thing is to get through that, have confidence, say, hey, uh, keep moving forward, just keep moving forward. Put it down, trust your first, but I'm not saying just put down anything and don't care about it, have it almost like paint it in your head first. Have an idea first in your head. The value sketch helps a lot with doing that because you know exactly where the dark areas are, you know where the where the uh, light areas need to be kept, where the white areas are going to be. Uh, that helps a lot. But so once you put down a couple of brush strokes, don't, don't worry about it. It'll work out. Are you nearly ready for a break? Do okay, you? let's take a break. That'd be good. Can I have a word before we have a break? This summer, we had in the newsletter celebrated a very special lady. Okay, so um, have the bigger brushes, and we're going to uh, get in here, start putting it. Get uh, try to get to my. I have, we know the white, uh, with the light areas are going to be obviously the paper. Uh, we have the mid-tones, now I'm going to get to my darks as quick as I can here. So I'm going to put that there. Dry it a little lighter. And try to use as, as few brush strokes as possible. Coming in there. Pushing around. Doesn't have to be exact. There's nothing exact about anything. You're still out there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta look up every once in a while. It'd be funny if I looked up and there's like nobody there. And was like, <laughs> what? No, no, we're, no, we're, hey, we wouldn't take off. Everybody sneaks out the back door. Okay, I gotta fin I, I'm gonna keep moving here.
How much uh, lifting out of color do you do in your painting? You know, every uh, I try not to do that. Try not. Although sometimes I will, just a just maybe a a, a moist brush over a painted area, kind of I will lift it up a little bit. But uh, um, I figure if I if you try to hit, figure out where you're going to put it down, I try not to lift it up. Try to not think that I have even have that option. Although I will. For example, maybe like, maybe like in this area here, you know, this where he has this, uh, the fur is kind of uh, uh, wrinkled up a little bit. I may pull a little out of there, but that's at the end anyway, the very end. And I put that uh, uh, instant coffee down there, and. I probably put it down too late because it didn't it didn't um, uh, dissolve real quick, but it'll just brush off, whatever. Jim, when is the ideal time to put instant coffee down? <laughs> when it's shiny? When it's shiny or? About uh, 47 <laughs> seconds after. No, uh, no it, it, it's, it, it's hard to say, you know, because I put it down, it's too dry. I mean, I, I kind of knew it was going to be too dry because it was talking, but it will just, it'll brush off too, you know. Um, it's something you have to experiment with, you know, um, and see. It's like the salt too, sometimes in, in different papers, different effects. See what his eyes. I haven't used the word orange here. Let's get this in here. Let that dry a little bit. Now the ear is up here, just uh, kind of bouncing around. I like to bounce around a little bit. Just put that there. Whoop. And that's the ear. <laughs> Leave it at that. Come down maybe in here. This is dry enough, maybe. Too much water there. So if you have too much water, if, if you have, if the water is pooling, you know, you see a pool of water, too much water. It's way too much water. So that's what's happening here. Put too much water, so I'm just going to lift it out with a thirsty brush, moist brush, and pick that right up. And then I'm going to come back with uh, some orange in there, capture that really cool eye. Yeah, let that be there. Then I'm going to come back with uh, let's see, a little. Sp the smaller brush, start with a bigger brush, work your way down a little bit. And nothing, don't don't get hung up in details, that's for sure. Painting should be done all in one sitting, I always think. I mean that's do it in one sitting rather than, you know, watercolor, I think is, at least this style anyway, you want to do, you don't want to put it back down and come back tomorrow and continue with it. Edgar Allan Poe, they ask him, why does he always 
Why did you do a lot of short stories? And you wrote a lot of amazing uh, American author. Um, and people think Edgar Allan Poe, ah, that's a macabre. And, uh, I don't care for that. Amazing. Uh, he, had, he was like the first science fiction writer. I mean, he had some great science fiction stories, which had nothing to do with scariness and all that, but just kind of interesting stuff. But he always asked him, how come you write short stories? And he says he believes that a person should be able to read a story from beginning to end in one sitting. Boom. Not, not a big novel or whatever. Wait till that dries a little bit. Wild with the coffee, so <laughs> it's very serious. You shouldn't laugh. It's a very serious. Too much coffee, so I, well, I'm just gonna. <laughs> he asked me not to drink it. <laughs> I never, I never, I, I don't drink coffee. That's a strange thing. I just, uh, I've only had one cup of coffee in my life so far. Wow. It's bad, bad. I don't know. I love coffee. I love the smell of coffee. And put enough chocolate and cream in it, maybe I'll. Have it. I don't drink it, but. Do you drink tea? I do. Yeah, I like iced tea, hot tea. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, let's see. Just put a couple things in here. Maybe I'll do the background. Okay. Now, what are you going to do with the background? <laughs> so that um, has kind of a greenish cast to it, so I'm just pick a little red in here. Ooh, let's go. Let's go cooler. I'm going to go cooler over here. Cooler, cooler.
Let it be. Don't mess with it. Go back here. Kind of wet, so we'll just do that. Wait till that dries a little bit more. I want a nice, I want a nice sharp uh, accent for the eye to capture the sharpness of the eye. And if I have it, it's still wet. So if I put dark in there, it'll kind of diffuse out. It doesn't give that really sharp eye, you know. So I want to wait till that dries a little bit more. Dry. Then I'm gonna. This is kind of drying. Let's see. Taking uh, up the masking fluid. Are you using PBO? Pardon me? Are you using PBO? PBO, yes, exactly. Yep, yep, that's exactly, that's the best, I think. Uh, I've used the others and just, number one, I think it just has that nice blue tint in it. Plus it just seems to lift a little easier. Obviously, you know, you're going to have a white, and it's like, boy, I wish my teeth were that white. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we have to do, we have to do something with the teeth, right? I mean, it's, yeah, get some coffee and put the stain with it. Like, see how that all works together like that. That's a good idea. It all comes around. did that, oh gosh, uh, I, was, I did an elephant one time, and it's a kind of a front-on view of an elephant, and uh, I had a lot of color in there, and I did have, uh, uh, on the ground, I had some grass, you know, greens and blues and purples, but I did have some red on the ground, too, you know, <laughs> and it was in a show, and it actually it won an award, it was pretty cool, um, but I had a woman come up to me, she says, I can't look at your painting. That's exactly what she said. I just can't look at your painting. And then I was thinking, well, how did you know it was mine? I mean, <laughs> she says, there's blood in there. It's just, it's just, it's just, it, it looked like to her, she saw the red as blood of the elephant. And she, she interpreted it as somebody was hunting elephants, you know, and there was like blood on the ground. And I said, oh. And then when she said that, I said, oh my gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> Man, you know, and when she said that, 
you know, I could I could actually see that that you know there's blood kind of on the ground from the altar, but it was ah it wasn't meant that way. I, nobody else said that, but nobody else said anything about it. But I don't know. It's what you see, you know. It's art. That's what it is. Did a whole sequence on seagulls, how vicious they are. Yeah. He had blood all over. Oh. Painting. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's what you see, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That dries a little bit. So we're kind of getting uh, getting to a point where we're good. Just more orange, more orange in here. See a little texture, that's all it is. There. Don't overdo it. It's a trick, you know, it's a, one of those tricks, a little toothbrush. You know, we all done it with the splattering, toothbrush over it. A little bit goes a long way. you go to brush his teeth. <laughs> Get the blood stains off of the teeth. <laughs> what a group is this? My God. <laughs> blood on the teeth. Well, just, I don't. Okay, I know. Now that this is dry, we're almost there. Hang on. Put the blood on the teeth. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just I do have to bring this out a little bit more. Separate a little bit from the uh, from the background a little bit more. A little more definition to bring it out. <coughs> Still kind of wet, so it's not it should be dry, but anyway.
Oh, uh, I'm just scratching in the, the uh, whiskers here. Uh, an X-Acto knife. Yep, yep, just an X-Acto knife. Put a masking fluid? No, masking fluid. Because I don't know where, you know, how many I want until later. Somebody hit me in the head and say stop already, <laughs> because, you know, overworking. What did your fortune cookie say? <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> Good point. Go back and read my fortune cookie, right? Yeah, it was. Forget about detail and all that. But, uh, you know, we'll uh, just in here a little bit. That eye in there, be kind of cool. And then, just one little highlight in the eye, and then we're that's about it, folks. Reflection, reflection in the eye here. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the mood I'm in. <laughs> yeah, it's a reflection of the mood of the artist. You know, the artist always puts a little of themselves in the. Well, it's a friendly group, so I had to make it friendlier. <laughs> that was probably a rough group, you know. So it shows up in the it shows up in the painting. But anyway, uh, you got to look at it. Uh, but you have to look at. Uh, uh, in live and in person here, because it's, it does look different, a little different. Much different, yeah. Yeah, it does look different.